Now to start with, you need to choose the tray that you want to work on. Now I went to the charity shop and I picked this one up. Not very pretty as you can see. I picked this up for a pound or uh, wherever it's going to be converted into dollars or euros or wherever it is. Anyway, very inexpensive, a bit grubby. I wouldn't like to use that at home. I'm going to convert that now into the mosaic fish tray. Next, take your design sheets. And you can see here I've got many of the fish on here like that. And there's the slightly bigger fish. Now all you've got to do is cut all of those out. Uh, now you can also use for the background of the mosaic, you can use any of the sheets here. You've got different sizes and different effects there. Cut those out randomly to use with your tray making or I've been making lots of projects before and I've got all the scraps here from before with all the white bits behind. All you've got to do then is cut all the white bits off the edges and these I can use for making the project then there's no wastage at all. In fact all of the white bits here I'm saving in a big box and when I come to make paper mache I've got all those and nothing is wasted. Next, when you've cut out all the fish, it's a good idea to assemble it first. Just make sure everything's in the right place. And I just can, I'm going to put one there. I've got a little bit of double sided tape, uh, release tape on the back. I'm going to put that one there. You gently just build up the picture exactly as you want it. I think that one will fit in there nicely. And let's take another one off. That can perhaps go down there. I'm building this up first and then when you've done it up like that, if you've got a camera, you know, just one of these smartphones, I just took a quick picture of it like that to remind me when I assemble it again after I stuck the background on exactly what goes where and how it all fits together. So first of all, pre-design your, your tray. Now I'm just picking out randomly some of these mosaic scraps here. Now what I'm going to do is just do around the edge here because I find it easier to smarten up the edge and then just go inwards. And to start with I'm just going to brush on a little bit of PVA glue. I've got some here and I'm just going to brush it on there like so. It, goes, it dries pretty quickly and I'm just going to do it piece by piece. Now when you're doing this one as well I just want to put some on the edge here like that because I'm going to wrap it around. Keep it nice and thin, you can always add more later. The first piece I'm going to put down there like so. Now you can brush over it with your glue so it really sticks down well. Now I want this to just go on the edge. So at the back of it, I've just got a little bit of masking tape and I'm just going to take that off and put it on the back there like that. And then I'm going to wrap, now it will stick because I put some glue on the edge, just press that down and then just wrap that around the edge like so and then just tape it at the back so that keeps it nice and taut. When it's dry along the edge here you can then just trim it with a pair of scissors and you'll have a nice neat edge all the way around. So all you've got to do is press that down, I'm using my fingers here and I don't care use your fingers or the brush, all you've got to do first of all is go around the edge layering different strips of the mosaic design. Now as you can see I've gone all the way around the tray here doing the edge. Doesn't matter whether it's square or rectangle, uh, just do the edges first and then the fun bit comes where you start filling up the middle. And as you can see the shapes I've got here are pretty random because it is mosaic. Why give yourself more work? You don't need to keep trimming these out. So all you've got to do now is going, working from the outside to the middle, put your glue on and then just overlay more of the mosaic paper and just work your way around till you fill the whole thing up. When you've finished it, 
just check for any little gaps. I can spot one or two there, just a little bit of glue. Just take a sliver more and pop those over the top like that. Just fill in any little areas that may have missed. Now as you can see the front of the tray here is completely dry now. That's ready to put the fish on but before we do I'm going to finish the back off. If I just turn this over you'll see the one that I did at the beginning there. Now if this wasn't so horrible I'd have left it and just trimmed it like I'm going to show you in a minute but I think I'm going to just cover it as well. So the one that we did earlier at the beginning is here. Now we take that down so it would stick. Now all you have to do now is take your pair of scissors, you see how that's stuck on the edge so you get a nice rounded effect there. Now if I turn this over, a bit difficult to show you, so fold those over, that can then come out and going right up to the edge of the lip of the, the tray you just trim around it like that so that's nicely curved over like so. Now let me just show you the other ways of doing it. You could put, stick the front on like I have done now. Then you could go around and doing the same technique, if you're only going to show the edge, if you're not going to worry about the back, just take a, a little brush. I've already put some masking tape on the front of these here and I'm just going to run a little bit of glue on, right along the edge there and then taking the masking tape, just pull that taut in the middle there first of all and then just lift it slightly and just roll those two edges in it will crease at the back but that doesn't matter because you are going to be cutting it off and again just crease that one over and stick it down you might need a little bit more extra masking tape which is not expensive and easy to stick down there you go, that just holds it in position while the edge dries and then afterwards you can trim the edge off here and if the back was nice that would be okay but the back is not very nice is it? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick these edges right over and then cover the back in the paper as well. So all I have to do, don't worry about the masking tape, the masking tape is if you don't want to do it this way, if you just, you've got a nice back on your tray and you don't want to cover it, just a little bit of glue, pull it up in the middle first and then push it from the sides forward so you get that kind of clean edge all the way around. So as that dries you'll have a nice rounded edge there and then just a little bit more glue over the edge there and glue that down. Then we're going to fill the whole tray in a minute and then if you want to go on to the next one, a little bit of glue along the rim there, the edge of the tray, some glue onto the back, not as much as that, spread that out a little bit, and then pull from the middle your paper over the top first, get that tension going, hold it in position, then with your thumb just push that up here, pull that one down up there, it may crease a little but you want a nice rounded edge, and the same with this one, just push that in and as it's the back of the tray it's not too important as in the odd crease and that but push it in as much as you can, flatten that down and just repeat that all the way around and then we're going to fill the whole thing with the uh, mosaic. Now I've stuck down all the little flaps here, stuck them tightly so I've got a nice um, stuck edge here so it's nice and smooth. Now I can just go on ahead taking my scraps of, of the uh, mosaic background papers and I can just start adding those like I did the front and just cover the back as well to make it look all neat and tidy. Now you can see that this uh, tray now is completely covered on the front here and at the back there too. I've left this overnight to completely dry and I don't know if you can see but you've also got a lovely neat edge all the way around there too. Now the fun bit, we can start adding the fish. 
Now remember at the beginning I did a, I lay the fish out on the tray. Give me a rough idea where I wanted it all to go. So I've got that now ready to go. It'll help me place my fish where they were before. Put that at the side as my guide and I'll start off with this one here at the top. So again, it's just using some of this PVA glue, as you can see there, and just a, a nice brush, quite a firm brush, not a soft one. And I'm just going to start with my first fish and put this at the top. Again, all you need to do is just brush thinly. See, we don't want it to pucker. We don't want no puckering around here. And just lay that onto the tray like so and just press down like so just gently as I say we don't want it to start wrinkling now I'm going to take the next fish which is this one down here the yellow one and I've got these on this already cut out here and I just need to line that up so the face finishes just in front there so that's roughly where it's going to go very nice thank you very much and a little bit more glue and you can stick this down make sure it's in the right place there i think it's about right now again because it's a nice large piece it's always better to go from the middle out that way you're going to brush in the air bubbles out from underneath the paper and because it's a nice flat surface it should stick down really well and there you go now all you've got to do now is just follow your guide or redesign it as you go along if you want to and stick all your fish to the tray As it dries, if you're getting any wrinkles, then when the top's dry enough, just press them down with your finger and just iron up any wrinkles that do come. My tray now is completely dry, I left it overnight. All the wrinkles that were there have kind of smoothed themselves out, any that hadn't are just pushed down and now it's totally flat and feels good. I'm going to varnish it now, you don't have to, but I'm going to varnish it. And I've got a water-based varnish here, which says it is touch dry in 20 minutes. You can recoat it in one hour. It's a superior finish, protection, superior protection. And it is against knocks and scuffs and scratches. And it's non-yellowing and it's fade resistant, which is excellent. I've got a soft brush here as well, as you can see. And all I'm going to do is give it a, just one coat and then two coats, three coats, four coats until you're happy with it. With this particular one, you can paint it within one hour. I'm going to paint the, I'm going to varnish the front of it today and then tomorrow I'm going to varnish the back as well all the way around so it's completely protected. Just put your varnish on and just go one way if you can, left to right, right to left and just smooth that down don't put too much on you don't want to get all the globule bits just build up the layers layer by layer then hopefully when this is dry it's going to look like ceramic now you can see the front of the tray has been completely varnished and you get that beautiful gloss and it feels really good on the top now just to seal it I'm just going to turn that over and then give that a few coats of the varnish as well. So it's completely insulated all the way around, or if that's the right word, encased in the, in the varnish. Mm -hmm. 